Kia ora. My name is Tony Marie Smith. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the 2022 New Plymouth Mayoral Candidate Interview Series, the purpose of which is to give you, the residents of New Plymouth, a better idea of who your candidates are beyond their little written bios and their answers on the FAQ's Know Your Candidate webpage. Uh, if you're interested in looking at those, I will pop a link to that in the video description for you. Uh, but without further ado, today I'm speaking to Greg McKay. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me today. Uh, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, as you've mentioned before, uh, there hadn't been any sort of article, articles or anything on you through uh, the local media. So it's nice to be able to put a face to the name and to meet you in person and to allow you to speak and share your Thanks views. For sure. Yeah, yeah, cool. So for those watching, if you have seen other videos, you will know that I'm asking the candidates the same five questions to allow for a fair comparison of response. So we'll just get into it, eh? Yeah. Cool. Right, so arguably everyone who puts themselves forward from here will say that they are the best person for the job. But if that were true, then it wouldn't matter who we voted for. But although we all have different skills and qualities that make us valuable to our community, often the value of that depends upon what is needed at the time. So what do you think gives you an advantage over other candidates in light of what MPDC and the community are currently facing? Well, I'm a straight up person and um, hands on, more hands on than, than academic. Um, I'm honest, caring, and I've got the community at heart. And uh, I would also like to involve community more on all our issues, standing issues and stuff like that. And I won't take any bullshit from anybody. It's, um, if they want to perceive it, well, then look out. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, same. Okay, no bullshit. Good. <laughs> I like that. Great. Okay, so this is what I've called, uh, what I've coined the humility test of the questions, which is if elected, what aspects of the role of mayor would you expect to challenge you most? And what skills or areas of knowledge do you feel you could further develop to do the job well? Well, being a hands-on person and not an academic person, um, I don't have the computer skills like most people do, so that would be a great challenge. Uh, and also in the, some of the modern technology, like I've got an old phone, you know, not a screen phone and um yeah i just i just need to have a look at all, all those sort of things and it will upgrade me and uh, even even a lot of public speaking would help you know public speaking would help help anybody and um yeah it's just um yeah and the, the other one was um to get the skills and the knowledge of um, the processes of being a jp mm, okay yeah and despite those areas that you want to develop, you feel you are prepared and ready for those challenges? Yes, I am. I've got a, I like challenges and I, like, um, I don't mind pressure, whereas a lot of people don't like pressure. They don't like, yeah, it doesn't like, pressure doesn't worry me. I work better under pressure. Awesome, okay, great. Okie dokie, so, Regardless of your stance on three, the Three Waters reform, which if anybody wants to know the answer, simple answer to that, you can look at the Know Your Candidates website. I'm a bit more interested in seeing what the candidate's connection or perception of community feeling is. So regardless of stance, what do you see as the key reasons the Three Waters reforms have received such opposition from the community? Nobody, nobody wants to lose the three waters, and I'm and I'm there, and I'll put my heart and soul into saving it. One way we could save it, and that's possibly looking at putting it into a cooperative, along with our other assets. I have uh, talked to the community out there, and they just says, just do it, and that's what I would do. I would just do it. Just do the cooperative. I would just do the cooperative, put the rest of our assets in there and then um, see what happens after that. 
we need to look after it, see us. Mm, okay, the second part to this question is, if the reform is inevitably going to go ahead despite opposition, a lot of opposition, um, which seems to be the case at the moment at least, um, how would you alleviate community concerns? Well, that's probably a bit of a hard question. But, um, what I would have a look at is making sure that we, and we need to have a say in what happens within the, the running of it all, not just uh, see you later like type of thing when we have nothing. We need the input and we need to know what happens and we need to let, let them know what all our ideas and things are. Because every, every district is um, be under the uh, regime of the reform and I don't think it's fair. It's not fair. Why would we want to, why would we want to um, be told exactly what to do when it doesn't even belong to them? To me that's stealing them. Yeah, they're stealing. They're stealing our assets, and it's, yeah, I'm, I'm fully against it. Do you think that um, a sort of more top-down, distant approach would not uh, be necessarily meeting what each individual community, you know, around New Zealand, for example, um, would really want and need? Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a type of person that like their wants and needs for their their infrastructure is be totally different to ours. I'm, I'm a person that would um, uh, stand up to Jacinda Ardern, and I'm probably the only one that's running for me that's got the guts to do it, to stand up to her face to face and just tell us you're not having it. It's ours, you're not taking it. Simple. Mm. I think there might be a few people who feel the same about that. Yeah? Mm. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a believer that. Yeah. Boots and all for me under that one. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. At an event last week, there was a bit of an incident. Greg was a, what What would you call it, a renegade? Yeah, I'm a renegade. You're a renegade? I'm and a renegade when it comes to bureaucracy and the bullshit. Could you, could you please tell me what happened? Well, when it was my turn to speak, I had the 10 year plan with me. And um, I read it through from one to the other. There is some really good in it, but there's a lot of, as I call, not so good in it. So in the end, I decided that I was going to do have a little stint with it. So I, I hummed and hard and hummed and hard, and I thought, no, I'm going to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it. So what I did was, um, I, when it was my turn, I stood up and I had the 10-year plan, and I held the plan up, and I said that it wasn't sustainable. And I just, it's, yeah, I just said it wasn't sustainable. So what happened then was um, I went through just a little bit of a, of what the debit that we'd be getting into was like 400 million and then onwards probably more than that at 600 plus because they hadn't allowed in that 10 year for major infrastructure, which is like 248 in the book, but it's probably more like three, 350 million. Mm, mm. As everything goes up and down in prices. Mm, mm. So what did you uh, what did you do with that plan? So what I did, I ripped it up. You ripped it up. I ripped it up. Did you have and, you, did you have to do it in sections? Because it's quite a thick book. Yeah, I didn't. I ripped it up in sections. Yeah. You know, like I know you can do it. I was mean, ripped it up in sections and held it up and says it's not sustainable. After I ripped it, this is sustainable. And what reaction did you get from well, the audience? Well, some of the audience had wide mouths and sat back in the seats and it was just like, quiet. It was like, what the is going on here? And afterwards I had um, some of the people in the audience come up to me and say, good on you. I've never ever seen that done before. You've got my vote. You've got my vote. So I said, yeah, good. It just spread around me, just let everybody know. And that's, that's what we need. We need people like that to stand up like that. We have to, because otherwise, you don't want to be paying two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars plus a week just in rates. They're not paying the debit back. And just on the just on the ten year plan, it's about fourteen million wasted. Were you surprised about uh, the 
the amount of positive response you got following ripping that book up on stage, or do you think that it, it is actually quite reflective of how people feel? It's quite positive feedback. You know, like even now I'm still getting feedback from it. And when you have a running mayor's brother congratulate you on ripping it up, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Very interesting. Okay. You know, so hopefully, well, just to see what, what happens out there. All right, thank you. Right, so this is our second to last question. Um, the issue of misinformation, disinformation, uh, and its potential impact on the community has become quite a debatable topic. So in regard to democratic process, societal progress, what are your views on freedom of speech and conversely, some people's desire to censor certain ideas? Well, we've got to have freedom of speech and freedom of choice. And I'm a believer that we do need that. We do need that freedom of choice and speech. If we don't, where, does that, where do we end up? You know? And I, yeah, we just, it's just something that, yeah, we've got to have it. We've got to have it. We've got to have freedom of speech. And I'm all for that. Okay. Great. All right, well, we're going to finish up with a bit more of a fun uh, question. Do you have a campaign catchphrase for me that includes your name? Uh, Greg Mackay wanting to make a difference in our community. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So you pronounce it Mackay, not Mackay? Mackay, yeah. Mackay, oh, well, yeah. I've been pronouncing it wrong uh, the whole time. So yeah. can I suggest one for you? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Greg Mackay, he's your guy. <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> Do you like that one? Oh, it's good. It's good. Can you say it to the camera? What's that? Greg, Greg Mackay. I'm the guy. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for being here today, uh, Greg. I really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for watching and for taking interest. Don't forget to vote, otherwise there's no point in watching this video. Uh, and all the best. Thank you. Kakite. You're welcome. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I really, really appreciate it. Lovely to meet you.